welcome to episode number eight and in the previous episode i was dealing with basic mathematical operations and today i'm going to show you a little bit of your advanced mathematical operations which are going to need you to use your math class so what is a math class a math class it is a predefined class in java programming that you're going to use in order for you to manipulate your data to calculate your trigonometric functions your logarithmic and all of the other necessary stuff that you're going to need so okay in simple terms what is a class a class is what you're already using here so uh, a scanner one of the predefined classes that you're already using in java programming but as soon as we get to uh, object oriented programming that's where we're going to dwell more on uh, user defined classes and that's where we're going to go deep into classes where you're going to learn about uh, class constructors and all of those but don't worry about that information at the moment at the moment let's just focus on the fact that we have to use a math class so now a scanner class it's one that we were using in order for us to get input from the user but in this case whenever you're using a math class you are using uh, uh, a class which is predefined, but you do not have to import it. You just have to use it by uh, using the name of the class. So there is no need for you to do what we call class instantiation. So what is class instantiation? In one of the previous episodes, I've explained that class instantiation is the process of you creating objects for a class in order for you to be able to use that object. Uh, for you to point to that specific class so that you can be able to access all of the methods um, that a class is able to, to implement. And then, okay, now in this case, I'm still going to need a user's input, but it's fine. Let's start it afresh. And then now your declarations. Back to the basics. So now... For your declarations, so we're going to keep it as simple as possible. So now, the first things first, I'm going to do trig functions. So I'm going to do them the way you would just do them. And then I'm going to show you where the mistakes actually are. So and then now I'm going to do a system without the print line. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm going to just get to do your trig functions. And then now what we can have here, yeah, let's have a double and let's call it a degree. In this case, let's just say that we are doing one for 90 degrees. And then now in this case, 90.0, which is going to be 90 degrees. So in this case, I want to do a sine of 90 degrees. So the way that you can access it is that you can see math. You write the name of the class, which is math. You see dot. And then the method that you can get there from the classes that you can use uh, sign. And then you say sign degree, that should be able to give you sign 90 degrees. So we have to run this and check it out if it's doing the proper stuff. So in this case, it's not doing per se the proper stuff because if we were to go onto your calculator or anywhere, and then you say that you want to do the sine of 90 degrees, uh, it should give you the number zero, if I'm correct. So let's just check what is the sine of 90 degrees. So, so what it's saying in this case is that the sine of 90 degrees is actually 0 0.89 so it means that one is actually correct all right so now let us try the one for cost 90. i don't want it in uh, okay so this one it's giving it to me again because it was giving me it to me in radians. Let me say 90 degrees. Yeah. So cost 90 
should be a zero. Sine 90 degrees sh should be a one. So I was actually, all right, so now this is the wrong answer. So I was actually correct to say that this is the wrong answer, but I was wrong to say that sine 90 is actually a zero. So cos 90 is the one that is a zero. Uh, cos 90 is the one that is a zero and sine. Sine 90 is actually a one. So how do we get to solve this in order for it to give us a correct answer? So what you need to do is that you need to come back here and uh, you need to introduce to something that you learn whenever you're doing calculus that is called radians. So you must convert from degrees to radians. So what we can do here is that we can say red, that is going to be for your radians. And then I'm gonna say red. So I'm gonna say math dot, and then you say two radians. See here, there is two degrees. You can take it from radians to a degree and then you can take it to a radian, meaning that you're gonna need the angle in degrees. So yeah, you just put it like that. And then in the year, I'm no longer going to use the degree, I'm gonna use the radian. So this is how you actually use it whenever you want to do a trig function for a sign of an angle. Then in this case, it should be able to do, to give us uh, what you call the correct answer, which is now correct, it's giving us a one. So the trick here is that you must first convert from degrees to radians. Let me just give a comment here. So convert from degrees to radians, which is found in calculus before calculating the sine cos sine or tangent of the degree <laughs> of the, let's just say of the angle. So before you can calculate the, the sine, the cos or the tan of the angle, you need to first convert it into radians. So you're gonna use those two radians and then it's going to give you that in a double form then you can be able to put it inside there. So let's prove it here by changing this to a cos. We'll see, it will give us the correct answer also for cos. And then, uh, and then yeah, there you have it. This number, it's written in uh, exponential form. So as you can see that it's to an exponent of negative 17. So basically that number is just 0, 0.00000. But because whenever you're using your calculator, your calculator's indentation has cannot show you a number this big, it actually shows you the number zero. So okay, which should be a zero per default. And then that should be standard that we can assume that is a zero because on our calculator it comes out as a zero. So that is also correct. And um, going back here, you can also do it for a, a 10. You can see that whenever you're doing it for a 10, it gives you a very uh, high number, but this is because if I remember correctly, a uh, ten graph is that it got it's, it's it's got what you call your asymptotes, and uh, but at zero, at ninety degrees, it's approaching a positive number. So hence, whenever you do it like this, it should be able to approach some sort of like a high number but it's going to infinite. So this is a very big number. If you're now doing it to a positive of uh, exponent 16, that should be a very high number going to positive infinity. So that should also be an accurate number that you can get. But when you are in high school, 
usually what we're saying is that at 1090 degrees is undefined where matter of fact that answer is not really undefined there's an actual answer that you can get which is this one that is also correct so that is more or less what you're doing whenever you want to do a trick of a specific angle you need to first um, convert it so if you do a zero here you should be able to get your proper values there we go we're getting a zero for your 10 so 10 zero is actually a zero so that should be okay and then now I'm gonna do the other ones. Uh, we download the trick part. Uh, they don't wanna remove this. Okay, now for you, the other one that we we can do is that you can compare two numbers. You can have number one, have it as a ten, number two, <clears throat> have it as a twenty. And then you can use this. You can say int max number. There's no need for me to declare it again down here. It's just uh, max number. You can say max num. Let's also have a min number. So yeah, for the max number, what we can do is that we can say math.max. Then you can use this method in order for you to get the maximum of two numbers. So here we can say num1. So this is going to give you the maximum of the two numbers, which is 10 and 20. Just do the one for the minimum number. Math.min of num1, num2. Then let's just dim it out, say the max of num1 have it here and num2 have it here is can have it as max num the mean of Num one num two is minimum so there you go. The maximum of the number 10 and number 20 is 20, which 20 is, is bigger than 10. And the minimum of 10 and 20 is 10. So it's actually able to also work like that. That is the other thing that you can do with the math method. Then the, there's another way thing that you can do, which you can got it, you can get uh, an absolute value of any negative number. So you can see the absolute the absolute of the negative number num, we can say 
es... Ok, let's have a... It's concrete. Absolute. So let's declare up here. Ok, let's say int. And let's also have num. And in this case, let's have our num as negative four. And then now the absolute should then be assigned to math dot abs of an int, which is num. So what is an absolute value in mathematics? An absolute in mathematics is just the positive of any negative number. If you put in a negative four, the absolute value of negative four is positive four. The absolute value of a four is four. So it's always going to give you a positive number of whatever negative number or number that you are putting inside of it. So now when we run this, see it says the absolute value of negative four, it's a positive four, which is actually true. That is the other thing that you can do with it. And the other thing that you can still be able to do with the math is, let me just check from this, is that you can also be able to get a pi. <clears throat> so you can see double. Let's say pi. And then we're going to system that out the print line. Then we're going to print the pi. You will see that it's actually a pi is 314159265. So on and so on. That is the other thing that you can do in order for you to get a pi. You can get it that way. And the beauty of this is that you can. Also, the exponent, you can also get a tau, which is 6.2 something. And you can also get a silly. So a silly is if you are having a number like 1.5, So what is happening here is that uh, the math that silly, let me just quickly check what does it return to us, a double, 1.5, let's say we're putting in the number 1.5, or let's have it before as a double, Num we have it as 1.5 outside here and then inside here we're just gonna put in a num let's see we want the silly so system but out the print line silly should then give you, uh, so there is a, uh, so there is the number that is around, and uh, so a ceiling is like in your house, you're having a ceiling and you're having a floor. So what the ceiling is going to do is that it's going to round up and the floor is going to round down. So let's just run this. As you can see, it's going to return to you a 2 because it is what? It is rounded up. And if you put in a 1.3. Okay, let's just cancel it. I think we've canceled it. So it should also be able to give you a two. So what it does is that as long as there's a comma and there is a, 
there is a number after it. It doesn't matter whether the number is more than one or, 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 or below. I mean, it's more than a five or it's below a five. It's always going to round it up. So if you wanted to round to the nearest, you have to say dot round. This way, it's going to be able to round to the nearest. In this case, it's going to give us a one. There we go. That's how you get a one. You have to use a round instead of using silly. If you're using a silly, if you're using a seal, it's always going to round up whether the number after the comma it's above a five or not. So the other one that I spoke about is a floor. This one is going to give us a one. Round down. Even if I say 1.9 here, but the fact that I've used the floor, it's going to round down to the nearest integer. There we go. That's how it works. So there's a couple of number of them that you can work around and look at. But in this case, this is what I'm actually going to show you and what is um, very um, uh, straight to the point with. And the other thing that you can do here is that you can do a log of a specific number and you can uh, also do use power. So I've forgotten to show you the power. So the dot power, what it does is that you put a number, let's say you put the number two and you put a three, this should be able to yield to you a eight. So this is, means that is two to the power of three and that should be able to give you a eight. Let's put in a double, should be able to see power here, yeah? should be able to yield a double. And uh, in this case, system that out the print line. And in this case, we're just going to see power. And we want to see if we are able go, we are able to uh, yield the eight. And that is, is it. We are able to yield the eight because two to the power of three is actually equivalent to an eight. And uh, I think that is the last one that I'm going to show you, but there is a lot. Just for the sake of the length of this video, I'm just going to let you to walk through this and have your time to explore all of this uh, useful, um, all of these useful uh, methods that you can get from the from this math class. And till on the next one, I'm gonna have a special episode where I'm going to be explaining to you how to use random numbers how you can generate unique random numbers. We're going to look at the program where you can be able to generate unique random numbers. And uh, till the next one, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And that's it from me. Uh, but before I go, can I just quickly do this one? There's also a square root. You can get the square root of a four. Um, that should also yield the double. Uh, let's say it, call it the root. And then system that out the print line. Uh, it should be L before the E. And system that out. Uh, system that out the print line. Then we want to write the root inside here. That should be able to get the square root of a four which is a two in that one. That's the also uh, one of the methods that is exciting about using the math class. So, yeah, uh, as I was saying, but that's it for me. Till the next one. Cheers.